What's up guys? This episode I want to talk about a service called Cockpit that you can install on your Linux servers. So if you're deploying Rails to your own servers, it's nice to have an admin interface somewhere so that you can see CPU and memory usage and manage your services that are running on there. It's also nice to be able to do that from your phone and that's exactly what Cockpit is going to allow us to do. It's gonna give us a web interface that we can use to manage our server and so if you're using Hatchbox or you've set up your own server on DigitalOcean, Linode, Vulture, Lightsail, EC2, or wherever it might be, you can install Cockpit to add that administration interface and get something that will give you graphs similar to what you would get on Heroku. So this is pretty awesome and very, very easy to install. So let's dive into adding this to our own server. Now I have a server that's been set up with Hatchbox. So we're gonna SSH into that and we're gonna run sudo apt install cockpit. And it's going to ask for our sudo deploy user password. We can paste that in. And this will install a slightly outdated version of Cockpit. We can see the version number here, 164. And if we take a look at the latest version of Cockpit, it's 183. So we're using Ubuntu 18.04. And we can actually then, instead of installing Cockpit using the normal install command, we can say Bionic Backports after slash um, past the package name. That's going to tell it exactly which repository we want to install Cockpit from, and that will make sure we get the very latest version. Here you can see it's 183 now, which matches the version that we see here on Cockpit's instructions. Now, if you're using any other server operating system, you can take a look at the instructions here. It's very easy to install, and once it's done, you'll need to either uh, just go try it out, or if you have a firewall, you're going to need to enable port 9090 for that. So I'm using UFW, that's something that Hatchbox configures for us as our firewall. And so we'll say sudo UFW allow 9090, and that's going to add that rule. We already have it in our UFW configs, so it's just going to skip adding it because we've already got it on our server. So then we can open up our server's IP address. So if we grab the public IP address of our server, we can go to 9090, but you're gonna to want to use HTTPS to access that. Now this is going to bring up a login interface for Cockpit, and you're going to have a username and password that you wanna log in with. You're going to log in with the deploy user uh, if you're using Hatchbox or whatever user your app is uh, running on, so you don't want to be logging in as the root user necessarily, but we are going to then check this box to reuse my password for privileged tasks. That's gonna allow us to become root and run commands as root, but we're not gonna log in directly as root. So I'll paste in my password and log in, and we'll be presented with an admin interface for our server. What's super cool about this is it tells us how many CPU cores we have. So the larger your server is, the more CPUs you will have, and it'll be able to show that usage. You'll also be able to see here the memory usage. This is a common question that people have because unlike Heroku, your servers like DigitalOcean and Linode have a set memory limit. You get exactly that and your operating system will kill any processes that overuse memory, but on Heroku, they have more flexible limits. They have extra RAM, and they allow your application to go over the memory usage for a little while before it kills it. And so with your Linux servers, you wanna be able to look at the real-time memory graphs. If you're using graphs and monitoring from, say, DigitalOcean, they're gonna take a, a chunk of the memory once in a while, but it's not gonna be real-time. So this will give you a much better idea of your memory usage. For example here, we don't have a lot of free memory for a new deploy to go and compile assets for or install Nokugiri new versions and compile stuff. So we don't have too much free RAM here and it's probably good for us to then go and upgrade this at some point in the near future. We can also see our disk usage and our network traffic here. And we can see that the system is up to date and our operating system version. It even knows that we're on a DigitalOcean droplet, which is super cool. So this is great. You can also restart your server or shut it down from here if you would like. And you have a lot of other options here to take a look at things. So one thing is you can see the server logs here, which is really cool. 
You can see everything if you would like to go take a look at what's going on here. And you can pay attention to some of these things here like uh, SSHD is clearly being attempted to be accessed by some sort of attacker. So here we have invalid user Ubuntu, which is the typical user of an Amazon EC2 instance. And so someone's trying to attack our server with the Ubuntu user. That's a good case for us to make sure that we have fail to ban running on our server to make sure those users get banned when they're doing this stuff. And you can take a look at that episode, which I've also recorded um, after this one. So um, then in storage, you have access to your server storage. You can see, you know, I have 24 gigs of storage and I'm using two and a half. We have plenty here and you can just take a look at that if you have more complicated setups or anything else that can be useful. Um, we also have access to networking. We have access to accounts, our Linux user accounts. And then the services tab keeps track of all the system D services that are running on your server. These are basically things that you want to have always running and they will automatically be restarted if they have crashed or anything like that. So here you can see actually I have failed to ban running on here. And you can look through this and you'll see that there's quite a bit going on for the base Ubuntu install, but some of them are ones that we have added. So here we have Postgres. And you can see here the logs for Postgres. It has restarted a couple times um, yesterday. And that was probably from upgrades. Here we had a system reboot, so it shows that. And you can see all the details of the logs of those. So if you ever want to go in and look at your Nginx logs or uh, your Sidekick logs or Puma logs, you should be able to see them listed out here there's also an applications tab, which um, I'm not entirely sure what type of applications show up here, but you can take a look at the cockpit uh, instructions for that. But you can also go into the software updates section here and find which packages need upgrading. So currently our system is up to date, but you can check for updates and this will show you the packages that need upgrading whenever those are available. Then you can click on terminal and you can have access to a terminal, which is super handy because if you ever need to do any work on your server from your phone or your tablet, when you're traveling, you can just visit your server's IP address, port 9090 from your phone, and then log in without using SSH and get a terminal. So that can be very handy for any situations where you need to do some maintenance on your server on the go. Then one other thing I want to mention here is that if you want, you can actually go through and configure um, Cockpit to have all of the logs aggregated from your other servers into one. So here you can see your CPU, memory, network, and disk IO usage, and you can have those basically added um, all together here. So they have a bunch of other cool stuff that you can use. You can take a look at the documentation for Cockpit and see all the different services it runs and how to configure different things like different authentication mechanisms or single sign-on and so on. So Cockpit is a super useful little utility you can add to your Rails server to have it running and just be able to manage that a little bit easier if you were running your own servers. So that's it for this episode. Um, take a look at the fail to ban episode as well. This is definitely something that you want to have as well to harden the security on your servers. So that is it for this episode and I will talk to you guys in the next one.